Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Philip. This is the Rangers Respite, and this is an overview of round one bouts one and two of the 2024 Virginia Whiskey Tournament. Let's start with bout one. I've only got two of the four distillers. I've only got examples from two of the four distilleries in this bout. Um, Filibuster and Deep Creek. My original plan was to do a little spiel about each of the distilleries and each bout, you know, maintaining a video of 10 minutes per round. Sorry, 10 minutes per bout. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten word back from any of the distilleries that I've reached out to. So this is going to be probably about five minutes for two bouts. Maybe next week, the distilleries that I reach out to will respond with, you know, a few words. We'll see. Anyway, let's start with Filibuster. Filibuster was founded in D.C., moved out to Mowertown, Virginia. They do a lot with secondary aging, you know, wine casks, and and interesting other finishes and blending uh, to create things like the Boondoggler, which is a blend of whiskey finished in five different barrels. It's interesting. They have uh, an interesting history. If they win and move on to round two, I'll talk more about them. That goes for all the distilleries in this round. Next up, we've got Deep Creek Distilling, first distillery in Chesapeake, Virginia since Prohibition. Uh, founded in 2019, or at least that's when they received their DSP. And, uh, and they make some pretty good rye and bourbon, uh, as well as uh, a clear white whiskey. Uh, next up, we've got Three Notched Distillery, which is a sister to the largest craft brewery in Virginia, which is Three Notched Brewing, which has five locations, Nelson County, Charlottesville, Richmond. Hold on. Charlottesville, Nelson County, Richmond, Roanoke. I'm missing one. Tell me about it. Hey, Three Notched, reach out, reach out and let me know which location I missed. Um... And then we've got Flying Ace Farm, which is on the Flying Ace Distillery, which is on the 85-acre Flying Ace Farm in Lovettsville, Virginia. They produce uh, farm two-glass bourbon whiskey. Um, and uh, it's actually kind of, it's not unique. There are a lot of distilleries that do that. They are probably the closest to a major metropolitan area of all the ones that do it in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, that brings us to about two. I don't have anything from uh, any of these distilleries um, and they haven't reached out or haven't replied when I reached out to, to get like a few words about them, which in the case of Franklin County distilleries is pretty frustrating because their website doesn't actually say anything about them in their about us section uh they've got the history of moonshine and what makes franklin county the moonshine capital of the world but not really a lot about them and their process and that's frustrating and it makes it hard to do a segment where i talk about them without you know them responding to my email um next up we have uh, Rooster's Rise and Shine Distillery, which is also in Franklin County, Virginia. And they also primarily focus on moonshine, but they do make a rye whiskey and a bourbon. Um, they are named for the family patriarch, uh, Ronald Rooster Hodges. Uh, and the Hodges family has been in Franklin County since 1823. And then we have uh, Twin Creeks Distillery in uh, Franklin County, Virginia. Uh, they, uh, the founder operators, grandfather, uh, James Walter Hatcher, uh, alias peg was convicted of being the kingpin of the 1935, uh, moonshine conspiracy trial, which is a pretty big deal. Um, and that history is, uh, through a line through their production and, you know, they, one of their whiskeys is peg Hatcher bourbon. Then we get to the outlier of this batch, uh, outlier because they're the only <laughs> only distillery in this about that isn't 
in Franklin County, uh, and that's uh, Springfield Distillery in Halifax, Virginia. They're on a property with a uh, farmhouse built in 1842, um, and they started producing whiskey from locally grown ingredients in 2014, and uh, they they have a really, really interesting approach to talking about the history of distilling in Virginia and locally to them. They make some fantastic whiskey. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any on hand. I spoke to a representative of theirs at a drink local event, um, I want to say a year ago, two years ago, somewhere along there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to, to talk about these guys without their input because for some of them, I don't have a whole lot to go on. Others, I don't have a good way to sort of condense the volume of information on their website into an easy bite-sized part that will get across the things that they want you to know. So, uh, good luck to the distillers. Uh, remember to vote. Uh, in the description down below, you will find links to Instagram and Twitter. Uh, two links for each. There are two votes going on. Um, you can vote in both on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, how it works is that a distillery with the highest number of votes combined from those sources will win. And uh, move on to the second round, where I will get a take a more in-depth look at who they are, what they produce. And uh, for from about two, I am guaranteed to buy a bottle from the winner of the first round. Um, to that end, if you would like to support what I'm doing, I have a link in the description to my Etsy shop where I sell pens. Some of them are made from bourbon barrels. Some of them are made from other woods. Um, I'd really appreciate your support. Uh, it's a great way to get your hands on a really nice pen and support me so that I can continue to support craft distilling in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you, and I'll see you later.